What's up guys, CodeForge here, welcome in the next video. Today we'll implement backend for our chat application. On the screen you have the sneak peek how the final result will look like. And we can see that John is asking us how we're doing, so let's answer. And let's say it will be great. I will be implementing chat application and we hit enter. So this is basically it. You can see that each user received the message and now we will move to the project part. We are on the Spring Boot Initializer page and our chat application will be based on vanilla WebSockets. We will not use SockJS or Stomp protocol. So it will be very interesting. And yeah, the front-end part of our chat application we will implement in the separated video. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification so you will be informed when the video is ready. Anyway, we'll test out our backend application together with the frontend application of our chat. But I still have to record the frontend part so you have to wait a little bit longer. Okay, so this is a starting project. It should be pretty familiar for you. Almost all values are default. I only have changed the group and the artifact and the name. So all we have to do over here is to add the dependency for the WebSockets. So we click the add dependencies and we want to search for the WebSockets. And this is all we need. We hit enter. And right now we can generate project, open it in the IDE and start coding. Okay guys, so here we are in the IntelliJ with the imported project. I got a tip from one of the viewers that I should make a font a little bit bigger so it will be a little bit easier to read on the laptop screen. So here it is, I hope it will be enough. We'll start with creating two packages. And uh, so in our root package, we'll create a configuration package for our configuration class. And the second one will we need is the uh, service package for our service. Let's start with the configuration class. So in the configuration package, we want to create a new class and we want to call it WebSocket configuration and I have to make it bigger also here first of all let's uh, mark our class as the configuration bin so we want to use the configuration annotation and the second thing we want to do is to enable WebSocket so we have to use the enable WebSocket annotation now our WebSocket configuration class needs to implement the interface. So we want to say implement and the name of the win interface is WebSocket Configurer. And thanks to that we can override one of the methods from there and it is the reg register WebSocket handlers. So we want to override this method. Inside this method, we want to register our WebSocket handler and we can do it by using this parameter WebSocket handler registry. So let's use it WebSocket handler registry. And this object has the method add handler, which can be used to add the WebSocket handler. Our handler is not existing right now, so we have to create one. Before we do it, let's change the package name from the service. To the handler to avoid the confusion and inside we want to create new java class and let's call it chat websocket handler for now it's all we need we will implement it later so now we can go back to the websocket configuration we are almost ready to add our handler to the registry but before we do it, we have to create a bin for our chat WebSocket handler. And to do it, we have to use the bin annotated method. So we'll start with the bin annotation. And now we'll create a method which will be public. And it will return the WebSocket handler type. And now we have to give it a name. So we'll call it get chat WebSocket handler. Oh, 
All we have to do in the body of our method is to return new instance of the chat WebSocket handler. So we say return new chat WebSocket handler. And we are getting an error over here. So let's fix it by going to the chat WebSocket handler. And over here we have to extend the text WebSocket handler and the error should be gone. So we do it and over here you can see that the error gone. You may be curious why the error disappeared when we have extended the text WebSocket handler. And this is because text WebSocket handler parent uh, is implementing the WebSocket handler interface. So now, now our class is fulfilling the same interface and the same contract. So this is why we are not getting any error. And right now we are finally able to register our uh, WebSocket handler in the WebSocket handler registry. And we can do it by simply calling our get chat WebSocket handler method over here. As the second argument of this add handler method, we have to pass string. And this string will be an endpoint where our WebSocket will be available. So to do it, let's create a private static. Uh, it will be also final, final static string. And we want to call it chat endpoint and we want to set it to the slash chat and okay and now it's good and now we can pass it as the argument so we'll use the chat endpoint property we will add one more thing over here so after adding our websocket handler and specifying the endpoint we have to also set allowed origins and in our case we will set it to the asterisk so we'll allow everything Configuration of the WebSocket is ready. Now we can move to the chat WebSocket handler and take care of the session and handling the messages. Over here, we are already extending the text WebSocket handler class. And thanks to the interface that is being implemented in the parent of this class, we can override some methods. So we can say override methods. And from here, we want to Override the method after connection established. This is the first one. We also want to override the handle text message method. And the last one is the override methods and it will be closed connection or something like this. Yes, it's here after connection closed. Before we will implement our methods, we will create a collection. And in this collection, we will store our WebSocket sessions. So we'll say private. We want it to be final. And it will be the list, which will store the objects of type WebSocket session. We have to import list. Yes. And we want to call it WebSocket sessions. And we want to set it to the new array list and this is pretty much everything now we can take care of our methods first one is the after connection established method and it will be called each time we will establish a connection via websocket and it will receive this websocket session object so all we want to do over here is to add the session to our collection so we say websocket sessions at session next method is the after connection closed and it will be called each time we close the connection via websocket and when when it will happen we want to remove the session from our collection so we say websocket sessions remove and we want to pass the session object Okay, and the last method is the handle text message. And this method will be called each time we will receive the message from one of our clients. And since we are implementing chat application, we want to broadcast this message to all of our clients. 
To do it, we will iterate over WebSocket sessions collection because this is the place where our client sessions are living. So we can remove this line of code and we can use forage loop to iterate over it. And inside the for each, we want to create a WebSocket session for each iteration of the WebSocket sessions collection. And inside of the for loop in the body, we want to use this WebSocket session object and call the send message method. As the argument of the send message method, we'll pass the message which came from one of our clients and we want to broadcast this to everyone so each of the clients from our WebSocket sessions collection will receive one. Okay guys, and this is pretty much everything. We have implemented the backend for our chat application. So now we can build it, start it and test it out with the frontend application. So we go to the Maven. Over here we want to go to the lifecycle and we want to click install and after a few seconds it should be done so the build is success now we can start the application so we go to the plugins and we want to use the spring boot and we want to use the spring boot run we click it and in few seconds it should be up and running okay it's here on the port 8080 Let's quickly jump to the frontend application so you can check out how we are connecting with our backend. So here we are in the frontend part of our chat application. Over here in the constructor, you can see that we are creating a new WebSocket object. And as the argument, we are passing the URL to our backend, which we have implemented in this video. And the first part is the protocol, which is WebSocket. After that, we have the host name together with the port name where our uh, service is listening so it is localhost and port 8080 and the last part is the endpoint slash chat which we have defined in our backend so this is all regarding the frontend part of our chat application if you want to see how to implement it check out my separated video about it so now we can move uh, to the web browser and test the frontend together with the backend which we have implemented in this video. Okay, so over here we have two instances of the frontend part of our chat application. Implementation of this frontend application will be in the separated video, so make sure to check it out. And Underhood is running our backend service which we have implemented in this video. So let's test out our application. So on the left side we'll have John and on the right side we'll have Will. This is the place where you can provide the nickname by the way and over here we can provide the message. So let's say we want to say hello. We are hitting enter and we can see that each user receives the same message. So now let's say the Will wants to answer and we want to say hi. And you can see that our broadcasting is working because each client that is connected via WebSocket to our backend service is receiving the message. So this is all for today, guys. I hope you enjoy. If you want to see more, remember about hitting subscribe button and turning on notifications. I will try to upload the frontend part of our chat application as soon as possible. So stay tuned, guys, and see you next time.